Hey guys, this is Dylan again with Jarvis Technology Solutions. Hope everybody's having a great weekend. So today I'm going to do another video on OpenSense. Today we're going to do be doing VLANs and subnets uh, with OpenSense. Um, before we set it up where we had just a flat network, so today we're going to do it where we have two or three VLANs, and then I'm going to set up a Cisco 2960 switch as well as uh, show you two PCs on the network to getting the correct IP addresses. So if you want to look at the screen up here, the first thing we're going to do is go to interfaces and then other types and then VLAN alright so here is just a standard create a VLAN uh, right now we're going to do uh, VLAN 10 and we're just going to call that data and then make sure on the parent interface you set this up as the LAN interface alright and then you hit save and then we're going to create uh, another one as well so again make sure it's set on LAN so as the parent interface and we'll do number 11 and this is we can do data 2 alright so this is just setting up the VLAN itself so now we're going to assign it to a parent interface so to do that you go up here to assignments and then right here they kinda have it pre-staged for you so to speak so right here you just click add and then again it has 11 selected and it's to add Alright, so from here I'll just go ahead and hit save, that way, it, that way it saves it as it is. And then from there you can go back and you can give it a name and you can enable it. So here I'm going to put data. And then right here again with the block private networks and the Bogon network. So this is the LAN side, so I'm going to leave that unchecked so it allows those IPs. And then we're going to go ahead and do a static IP address. And then we're going to go ahead and give that a 192.168. dot. Let's do... Um, I have a few other networks running already, so we'll do a let's do a 105, and then we'll do dot one. So this is for the gateway, and then make sure you put 24 as the subnet mask, or the satellite in this case. And click save, and then remember, make sure you hit apply. It changes up top, so that it actually uh, applies it. All right, now then go down to op two, which you can click that right on op two on the side. That'll work, and then you click enable. Data two same stuff and then we go right here hit static so we made the previous one a 105 so I'm just going to make this one a 106 oh, 102, 106 there we go and then hit uh, 24 for your side annotation bam and then hit apply changes so so far we've created the VLAN on the on the firewall and then we've also assigned it to a interface so now there's two things we need to do we need to go ahead and give it DHCP v4 and then we also need to do a firewall rule. So let's go ahead and scroll down to the services, DHCPv4, and under data, make sure you click enable first of all, because huh, people forget it more likely than you think. It copied that, and so here's for the range. And so I'm just going to put 100, or yeah, 100 right here. And then on the back side, put 150. And then DNS, you can uh, leave it as the gateway, and of course, make sure the gateway is there. Let's scroll down, hit save. All right, make sure that it took. I think we're good to go. And then go down to data two. Again, enable it, and then to make it easier. I go ahead and highlight it again. One hundred, one fifty. Oh, <laughs> that's not going to work. One fifty. There we go. On the DNS, same thing. On the gateway, same thing. Okay, so here we go. So we got that set up. Hit save. All right, and then you can click off and click back on if you want to, but obviously it's going. All right, so now we have the VLAN, we have the interface, and we also have the DCP before. So now we have to add a firewall rule to allow any traffic from that uh, network out to anything else, or however you want to do that. So we'll go up to firewall, and then rules and then data. Alright, so right here, no data rules are currently defined. All incoming connections on this interface will be locked or blocked until you add a pass rule. So, they already have some automatically generated rules for DHCP, um, but you need to go ahead and add a rule in there so that it can allow that traffic. So, you need to come down here. You can tweak this however you want, but right now I'm just going to do it where the source of the data net, which is the interface we just um, defined. And then I'm just going to say let it go anywhere just because this is a lab. 
and then you can also make sure you hit uh, log packets that are handled by this rule that way you can see the firewall rules going down on the log file all right so everything else looks good here save and again make sure you hit apply changes all right and then we'll go down to data 2 under the firewall and basically the same thing hit add and then right here down at the source, you can click on, scroll down to hit data uh, to net. Everything else is good. Hit log packets and hit save. All right, so at this point, our firewall should be set up to define to uh, hand out IP addresses on those VLANs that we set up. So that's good. And in a moment, we're going to go ahead and set up the switch. Hey guys, we're going to go ahead and part two of this where we're going to set up a Cisco 2960 switch and we're going to apply the VLANs. That way we can have DHCP flow down to the end devices. So if you take a look at the screen, we're going to go ahead and enable and then go into the GCM with config T. And then we're going to go ahead and set up a SSH as well so we can remote into it over the network. So let's go ahead and do a, uh, add in a username with privilege level 15 and we'll make it a simple secret password. And then go ahead and define a host name and also define an IP domain name. So you have to have a host name defined and a domain name defined so that you can generate crypto. So we'll go ahead and name it lab and then I'll do crypto key generate RSA and then 1024 so it'll activate the SSH 1.99. Alright, and from there, so uh, the, on the switch port, port 1 is connected to the firewall, so we'll go ahead and turn that into a trunk port. So we'll do interface FA 0 slash, oops, 0 slash 1, and do switch port mode trunk, and then I'm going to let this do its thing really quick, where it's going to activate it, or take it down and then reactivate it. Alright, then we'll do switch port trunk, allow VLAN all. And I'm just doing all because it's a um, a lab setup. If it was if it was a production environment, I would only allow certain VLANs to go across it. So then I'm gonna go ahead and do duplex auto speed auto, and then it's already not shut down. Just, it's just best practice to go ahead and do a no shut for your ports. All right, so now that's up. So now let's go ahead and set up the VLANs. So VLAN 10, name, data, and then VLAN 11. Uh oh, VLAN 11. Okay, there we go. Name, data 2. Okay, so now you can verify those by doing uh, show VLAN brief. All right, they're both there. So at this point, we had the VLANs created, but there's no ports assigned to those VLANs. So I have a PC on switch port 3 and on switch port 7. So I'm going to assign one to the 10 and one to the 11. All right, so then we go to do, go back into the GCM and then do interface FA. 0 slash 3 uh -oh. and we're going to do switch port host and switch port access VLAN 10 and right, exit out of that and then do interface FA 0 slash 7 switch port host again switch port access VLAN 11 okay and then you can go and do a shut no shut just in case I'll go back and do that to the other one as well. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to open up the actual LAN on here and make sure it took it. So this right here is port on port 3. So if you double click this and hit details, you'll see that it's getting on the VLAN 10, it's getting the 105 address here. And then skip over to the HP. And open that up. You'll see that's getting a 106 address. Alright guys, so that's the basic setup for setting up the firewall with VLANs and interfaces and rules and also setting up the switch with the VLANs to allow IP addresses to be distributed per VLAN. So I hope you liked the video and I'll give it a like if you liked it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comments. I appreciate it and y'all have a good one.